The psychedelic explosion is a subject on which we need a great deal more careful thought and a great deal less emotion because it's a very touchy subject. I'm going to talk this morning about the general background of this explosion so as to put it in some sort of perspective in time and space. And I have here a letter, a little card that I received. It says, Dear Mr. Watts, are you enlightened? If you are, will you please help me? I want to be enlightened also. Yours truly, Miss So-and-so, age 15. And as we know, the psychedelic explosion is something which is highly prevalent among young people and is a quest very largely on the part of young people for something which civilization as we know it in the West seems to have failed to supply. Now, what's the matter? The matter is fundamentally one of religion. It is that standard brand religion in the Western world is a very dreary affair that, in effect, what one gets from a church of whatever denomination, be it Catholic to the right or uh, Southern Baptist to the left, is almost entirely preoccupied with moralizing. And when you study the subjects of sermons that are preached Sunday after Sunday, you read the newspapers and see what they're talking about. You generally form the impression that what the churches in fact are, are sexual and family regulation societies. That's what they're actually doing. Because if you say, someone is living in sin, it doesn't usually uh, mean that he is following the profession of a bookie or that he is uh, conducting a business which is profoundly dishonest and selling things that are just frauds. It means a person living in sin is living in an improper or unconventional sexual relationship. And when we speak of immorality, it really doesn't refer much to uh, cheating your customers or uh, being intensely cruel to someone or uh, running a factory which is fouling the rivers. I immorality is generally taken to mean sexual irregularity. I remember when I was a boy in school that every year we had a particular preacher who came to us who preached the same sermon every year. And the subject was drink, gambling, and immorality. <laughs> and uh, immorality, of course, meant sexual irregularity. Well, in one way or another, with certain exceptions, the official churches of the West are saying to their congregations Sunday after Sunday, dear people, you ought to be good, with a rather limited meaning on what good is. And I often wonder what my devout Episcopalian brethren mean when they say the general confession uh, before the Holy Communion and say that we have sinned most grievously and that the remembrance of these sins is grievous unto us and the burden of them is intolerable. I wonder what they think of. I used to be an Episcopalian priest I suppose I still am. And as a result of that, I often used to hear confessions. And uh, I know the sort of things people confessed. And I know then very well what their idea of sin was. And in all this history of not only Western Christianity, but to a very large extent Judaism as well, there has been an extraordinary and curious failure to emphasize the value 